Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. My good friend Piston Miner, professional programmer from Germany, figured some friggin' black magic out about how Valve does stuff. Effectively, with Source Engine and Source 2, ever since 2013, Valve packs all their files into small subsections called VPKs. They're effectively just bags of data. They're not even compressed. A single VPK file is just a long list of all of the data for a whole bunch of different kinds of files. You'll have a couple hundred VPKs and it's all jumbled together for no other reason than to optimize performance for back when we used hard drives. Instead of having each individual file be found within the game to build, you have a few hundred files containing the thousands of different assets that are needed to run a video game. When you update one of those individual assets, you hopefully don't have to force your user to download that entire VPK again. In other words, if you were to update a single texture, an asset that only really takes up a couple kilobytes in a VPK that's actually a hundred megabytes, it's super inefficient to have the user download that whole hundred megabyte VPK for just that one, two kilobyte file. So what Valve does, append the list. They'll create a new VPK with the new file in it. And then you download that new VPK with the newer files in it that are much, much smaller. But how does the game know where all these, all this content is found? Well, there's actually a directory file. The directory file is effectively just a list of addresses. When a person is to update any one of those files and they append it, they put it in the new VPK, they change the address. So instead of it pointing to its first location somewhere in the hundreds of VPKs, it points to the end of the long list where it was just put while it was updated. But because that solution is done so that the user doesn't have to download brand new files every time each individual asset is updated, the old asset is still there. It's just not in the directory anymore. <laughs> So what happens when a game is about to ship at Valve, they rebake all of the VPKs so that a whole bunch of old content isn't just sitting in the files. They forgot to do that for desk job for some reason. And so when you run Piston Miner's program, which compares the address list with the data in the VPKs, and if there is any data that isn't on the address list, it'll pull it out and it almost always ends up being either unused content, earlier versions of released content, or just random stuff that was borrowed for another project for a short period of time, and it's incredible. After Desk Job has hundreds of files. Dota 2 has 150,000 undeleted files. Half-Life Alex doesn't have that many, but that's because they rebaked everything. But the pre-release press build does have some stuff. This is all just a roundabout way of saying Piston Miner found a new way to data mine. Xpaw the guy who runs SteamDB and does all of the software that helps data mine has already started incorporating this feature, this idea into his current uh, ways of extracting data, which we use to, to study future projects. There is so much work that is yet to be done. What the current problem is relates to how VPKs were rewritten for Source 2. It seems like this way of trying to make the downloads of games and updates of games as efficient as possible is something either new to Source 2 or heavily updated in Source 2. Very little work, if any, has been done to see if this kind of uh, undeletion process can be done for Source 1 games. If you want to try your hand on it, Piston Miner wrote up this whole blog on exactly how he went about doing it in a download to the program that you can use to undelete files from Source 2 VPKs. And if you know how to get it to work for Source Engine, by all means, please let us know. The 150,000 files in Dota 2 just goes to show that Valve has never rebaked the VPKs since they launched Dota 2 in 2012. So some friggin' archeological digs are gonna need to be done. I don't look forward to that. Anywho, follow me on Twitter for any updates on this story. If something monumental comes out of it, we'll make another video. Otherwise, it'll just be on Twitter. Join the Discord server if you find anything out yourself and you wanna communicate with me and Piston Miner about it. All of that's down in the description below. And if you wanna support the channel, we're always selling merch. We're about to relaunch a whole bunch of exclusive merch. So, you know, check out our merch store also linked down below and we stream every damn day so check out my twitch page twitch.tv slash tyler mcvicker i'm tyler mcvicker the passionate poo poo bum i hope you have a good week and i'll talk to y'all later
Adios.